tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! There it is. There's that music. <laughs> Oh my God, we're live. Right, full of mystery. <laughs> it's about to come. <laughs> Red Zone, right? Red Zone. This is the After Buzz TV, the Good Wife After Show. And I'm, I'm really excited about jumping into this episode today. I mean, we were watching gasping, you know what I mean? Like, right, I was like, yeah. can't believe that happened. I, I was having a, a BF attack. E exactly. Yeah. So we are season six, episode eight, Red Zone. And before we get started, I guess we should introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. I am Tara Johnson. And I am Allison Law, everyone. And Bobby couldn't be here today, but he wanted us to make sure he told we told everyone that he yeah. will be back next week. But we will hear him in our... In our spirits. Yes. I actually miss Bobby, you know? Do you? He would have been picking on me right about now or saying a little joke or something. That is definitely true. <laughs> and I would definitely... And it's a perfect way to lead in because if Bobby was here, what he would say is... If it looks like a duck, <laughs> it quacks like it's a quacks duck. like a duck. It's then a duck, it, yeah. right? So we're talking about Carrie. This was not the best episode for Carrie. It wasn't at all. I think. I mean, I think the what they always say about lawyers being the worst witnesses mm -hmm. is absolutely true. He was bombing yeah. in that mock in that mock you know testimony. Yeah, but you have to think about it, um, Tara. Why? What was making him do bad? And well, I think it was. Kalinda. Kalinda. I mean, this guy is fighting for his life. Mm -hmm. Let's just get into it, you know. This guy is <laughs> fighting for his life. Right. Everyone is telling him, you know, Diane is saying, you are 14 days away mm -hmm. from spending the next decade mm -hmm. in jail. Um, Viola Wallace, I mean, Walsh that came in to do his... To help his, out. Right. She said the same thing. He's a horrible witness. Right. If I was in the jury, he's going to go away for 15 years. And this guy cannot get it together. together. And then Alicia steps in and gives him some advice and says, yo, look, you need to get it together. This is what you need to do because if not, you're going to be in jail for over a decade. Yeah, get your head in the game. But I, I mean, honestly, and, and when Alicia was speaking to him, she said your anger mm -hmm. and your indignation is coming across. Mm -hmm. What I didn't realize at the time, but now since watching the episode, we realize it's his heartache almost that's right. coming through. It's Kalinda, and I told everyone I absolutely did not like her at all. <gasps> and I said, she's sneaky, she cannot be trusted. And of course, he tells her face to face, let's talk about him breaking the rules. Oh and my. And breaking into her house. How do you even get in there, first of all? I don't, and why would he risk it? Because, you know, because what's going to happen her. is this pre trial officer is going to come back. And she's going to try to revoke his bail, and he's going to end up in jail again. But he didn't think about that. He was thinking with his heart, because your love makes you do crazy things. We all know that, right? But this is, <laughs> I mean, I thought it before that Carrie cared for Kalinda a lot more than she did. So mm -hmm. we, we, just, we established that. I thought it was much more in the lust zone. But from this episode, it really does seem like this guy has real feelings for Kalinda and is in love with her. Well, he states that, and then she comes in with, I mean, we're not even going steady. We're not even together. And, you know, basically, I want to do what I want to do, and I don't want to be with just you. While he has 14 days left, she could at least, I mean, I guess she kept it real, but it's just painful. You know, I have 14 days left. This whole time, I thought I had someone that I was caring, that cared for me. Right. And now you just broke my heart, and I have absolutely no one. Diana's not even doing her job on the stand. <laughs> I can't trust her. Okay. At least she's too busy with the campaign. Right. You're supposed to be my lover, and you're not even there for me. So right now, I have no one. But I think he needed that because when she said that, he looked, seemed like he came back to work and he was ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what you're saying is exactly right. He realized that I thought I had someone I could depend on because when he kept getting hit with all these blows in this episode, what would he do? He would pick up the phone and call Kalinda. Mm -hmm. And she was hitting, de you know, decline, decline, decline because she was with her other boo, which yeah. is, you know, okay, it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's with her boo. That's fine. A female. Her female boo. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But I guess what he realized is, you know, I have to fight for this myself. I'm really in this by myself. I'm in this law firm 
with all these people making all this money, whatever it is. But when it really comes down to it, the only person who's going to fight for me is me. Is me. At the end of the day, all you have is yourself. I, I, I felt horrible for him. I mean, because yeah. he went from asking her. I thought it was strange when he asked Kalinda, where are you? And she was like, I'm at home. I, I was like, OK, well, something's up with him that he the fact that he's yeah. asking her where are you I think it's his intuition we all have that I mean your guy's cheating what are you doing who are you out with right. you know what I'm saying so right. he felt it all along that something wasn't right and that's why he went to her house and stalked her outside when he's seen her and the girlfriend saying goodbye to each other and kissing I mean Carrie come on yeah. you have other things to do besides stalking Kalinda and catching her kiss her, you know, her girl boo as they yeah. as they tell each other goodbye. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I was thrown that he did that, right? I was, but then when he showed up in her apartment, out of the blue, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. He, I mean, he really risked everything in order to make sure that she understood and and wanted to understand. Like he he needed her to understand exactly where do we stand right now. And I, his line when he says. For the next 14 days, I just need for you to pretend that you care. Mm -hmm. Can you just pretend, pretend that you care for me for the next 14 days? And she couldn't even do that. that. And my thing is, is that helpful? Like when you're going through something that tragic that he's going through 14 days and he said, I just want you to pretend when you're going through that situation you just want someone to understand or just be there and listen and you know say I understand I got you it's going to be okay Carrie and I think that's all he wants to hear is just someone telling him I love you or, or even just a little kiss even if you don't love me but us just cuddling and you're just giving me a kiss and showing me affection it makes me feel like everything I'm going through at that moment it will be okay. Yeah, and she couldn't even do that. She started taking her clothes off and was like, "You came yeah, here to bang let's me." Come bang. He was what? like, "Come on, don't even Pause, insult me like slow that." Down. Yeah. yeah, pump the brakes. That's not even <laughs> while I'm here. Right. You know. But I, I mean, my heart just went out to him. But as you said, I think it might be exactly what he needed he because needed he came back for that next day of questioning. Viola hit him, and he hit her right back. And they were like, "All right, and maybe we have a chance." He hit her with the, you know what, Kalinda, you can go to hell. And I have to say, I have been waiting myself personally for this whole Carrie Kalinda thing to end. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and I and I wonder and I pose this question to everybody. Is this really, truly the end? Because we go back a lot when we have these relationships, right? When you have these relationships where there's these gray areas and you're just doing your thing. And, you know, so I hope it's the end because I hope she's 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 bad. She's doing something she's not supposed to be doing in the beginning. I hope this was a smack in his face. You know, he, since he's been dating her, she's been bringing trouble. Can we say date? I don't even know if we can even say dating, right? What, making out or I don't, you know. friends with benefits. There I don't know go. what's going on. Right. But since they've been boo-loving or whatever they've been there doing, um, it's been causing more drama to his case. So he needed to let her go anyways. Even that the one lady who um, told her to stay away from... Kalinda says she's an evil person, and she saw that when she was doing the report. You remember? Oh, right, she's right, like, right. She's an evil person. Stay away from her. She was doing that to help him at the end of the day. I do think she was doing that. To, I do. I think she put that 30-foot restriction mm -hmm. between the two of them to help to help carry out right. because he realized that him continuing to, you know, do the boo thing, as mm -hmm. you called it, with, um, with Kalinda was going to actually cause more problems for him. Anyone Kalinda comes in contact with, like the dude Troy or... That died before right, he died. Troy Ragnar. Anyone who comes in contact with Kalinda, almost something bad always happened. Just like the girl he's dating now, Bishop, wants to do whatever with her, figure out what's going on. And Carrie, you know, does Bishop have a secret love for Kalinda and he wants Carrie dead? Well, you know what, let's, let's, let's just go there. It was a great segue because this episode... Kalinda's relation I can't even call it Kalinda's relationship with Bishop because I'm, I'm racking my brain trying to figure out what has happened between Kalinda and Bishop. I know they've had their run-ins, right? But mm -hmm. before, that's when, when Bishop was a client of the law firm, of course Kalinda had to take a lot of rules and you know handle whatever he was dishing out. Mm -hmm. He's no longer a client of the law firm. So when he is sneaking up on her calling her into his car and then dismissing her, he was like, get out. I'm right. like, wait a minute, what's going on? What does Bishop have on, on Kalinda yeah. to make her operate like this? My issue with Bishop is, first of all, why are you coming at me with that tone? 
Uh, who? Because he's who, Bishop. Who are you? He's Lamont Bishop. First of all, you're in trouble as well. You know, your name is on the line too. So you you need to kind of be nice to Kalinda because she is crazy and she can you know get you in some type of trouble. But I just my female intuition is telling me Kalinda cannot be trusted. She's sneaky. Apparently, she has this passion for sex from everyone she <laughs> loves that sexual attention that desire and you know it wouldn't shock me if her and bishop has something going on and that's why he feels he could come at her like that i have to say i'm all for predictions but really i have to say please don't let that one come true that would be just a bit much for me <laughs> it wouldn't be a much for me <laughs> it would be a, it would be a tad bit much it for would be me entertaining would it be oh of course i mean how would carrie feel about that by then, Carrie will be free, and he would know that Bishop was trying to kill him or put him in jail or do something bad. So by then, Carrie would be like, I don't care. I'm glad I'll let y'all go. And maybe Bishop would be, go to jail himself. But they're going to find out that Kalinda had something secret going on with Bishop. I guarantee it. So you think, actually, you think you think that Bishop is speaking so freely, and I, I'm saying so rudely and demanding— mm -hmm to Kalinda because when it comes down to it, Kalinda's working with Bishop? Kalinda's working with Bishop. She's intimate with Bishop. <gasps> or Bishop have some type of dirt or something to hold over her head. Think about it. Why are you talking to me like that? Well, if not, well, I have this information. I can blackmail you. Or he can always kill her, but he doesn't want to kill her. But see, I really do think that it's because, it, you know, Kalinda's character is leaving. I do think it's leading up to. Oh, my God. Death. Bishop, Bishop killing her. Because, I mean, let's let, for this episode, I mean, he's definitely giving her orders. Find out what your girlfriend is, is you know, is really investigating. Is she investigating me? Um, and Kalinda said, no, she's not. She's doing white collar crime. Well, I mean, Kalinda, you didn't tell him that you were seeing this federal agent. So, of course, he knows you're lying. But wait a minute. Why does she need to report to him saying, I'm dating this person? Who are you? Well, of course. You know? I mean, it's, so it's perfectly me off. Yeah, like, perfectly good question. Why like, did I have to report to you who I was screwing? I guess I mean, I, because it's this federal agent and he thinks this federal right. agent has something to do, of course, is investigating him, which it also makes me think. I mean, let's think about it. You said Kalinda's sneaky. But let's talk about this federal agent, Delaney. Um, we heard her whispering mm -hmm. in the in the bathroom. It says so she something about the essay. About the essay, she mentioned Bishop. So my question now is who who's playing who? Is you know is Kalinda playing her? Is, or is Kalinda getting played? Is Kalinda getting played? Is Bishop playing everybody? I don't you know I'm not really sure. But for the first time I you know since this episode I have a feeling that federal agent Delaney may be in. To this a little bit more than just getting her thing on, mm -hmm. you know, doing her scrump with, with Kalinda. Well, it seems to me that Kalinda actually may have some feelings for this federal agent because when Bishop uh, gave her an order, as you've seen, she was like, you know what? It seemed like she had some emotions into that. She was like, I can't do this. And she ripped a card. And when she did that in the bathroom, it showed me like, I care about this situation. I care what I'm about to do right now. Because, you know, any other time she's heartless, she doesn't care. So that showed me, like, oh, she had a second thought about it. I was like, you know what, I'm not going to do it. And by her not following his request, that may lead up to trouble for her. I think it's definitely going to lead up to trouble for her. But I have to say, I didn't feel that Kalinda had feelings for the federal agent. Mm -hmm. I thought when it really came down to it, I think she was taking a stand, like you were saying, like, wait a minute. If I... If I follow what he's saying, mm -hmm. then I'm just setting myself up for more trouble, right? Like, I felt like in, in at the end of the episode when she made the big decision, because it was very easy for her to deny whether federal agent Delaney was, you know, doing white-collar mm -hmm. crime or investigating Bishop. That was very simple for her. But when it really came down to it, he gave her a task that he wanted her to do. And I think it was a test of loyalty. It was a test of loyalty. It was a test of let me see how long I'm going to let you live. Mm -hmm. It was just a test from Lamont Bishop. And it was very easy for her. She she had the woman's purse. She had the card. Whatever that, I, I mean, you thought it was a tracker. I'm not sure if it's a bomb. Like, I don't know what that little it white thing is. A he, he wants to hear. It was a recorder something Record where you could hear everything. Something. But at the end of the day, she didn't do that also because it may put her in jeopardy. It may be some evidence to go against her. So, yeah. I think Kalinda's saving herself. Yeah. I think she's saving herself and she's taking a stand. Yeah. Because I think maybe what she's realizing is that, I, I mean, 
she can say that she cares for Carrie, and I'm not 100% sure about that. And I would ask everyone to weigh in and let, let us know right. how you feel about that. So I'm not quite sure how she feels about Carrie, but I do think in the beginning she thought going along with him was possibly helping Carrie and helping Carrie's case. And it was hindering. Right, and it was hindering the case. Like, right, right. more and more she got involved, the, the worse it Something, got for Carrie. His, uh, all the witnesses are dead. Right. Like, just don't help out no more. Yeah, she got more involved and everything got, got worse. But I do think she thought that she was helping Carrie. But now it's really becoming between her and Lamont Bishop because this federal agent is involved. And now he's really, he's no longer asking about Carrie because that's going to work itself out or not work itself out. Mm -hmm. He knows where that is. He knows that the federal, you know, federal government is using Carrie to get to him. He knows that. Mm -hmm. But now he's shifting, Lamont is shifting his attention to Kalinda and her relationship. And I think she was like, wait a minute. If I do this task for Lamont Bishop, I'm in. And I'm all the way in. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I have to follow whatever other direction he possibly gives right. me. When am I going to take a stand? Do I really want to be involved with right. this person? What's the next thing he's going to ask right. me? I think she had, I think she was taking the chance. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. She looked at it as if, if I do this, I'm going to be his little puppet. There you go. And she was like, you know what? F you. <laughs> you know? And she she did. She was like, no, because I'm just going to do what I want. Because remember, she's a boss. So she thinks. And she just was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And, you know, whatever. What? She's being a rebel right now. A rebel with, I don't know if she has a cause without a cause, but it's causing me to be really concerned because Lamont has made it completely you know, obvious. I do not trust what you're saying. I, I think he's made it really clear, Clinda. I don't trust you. I mm -hmm. don't trust what you're saying. I know you're lying to me. Mm -hmm. Let me test you and see where your loyalties, and not even your loyalties, where the you know where your sense is, because you mm -hmm. know I have taken out Trey. I took out Trey and his cousin last week in the car accident. So conveniently. But does Bishop trust anyone? I don't think he can. He he doesn't trust anyone. So I feel like he thinks everyone is turning on him. Everyone is against him. And he's he's trying to kill everyone. You know, he wants to kill Carrie because he thinks Carrie knows something about me. And if this uh, case gets uh, terrible or more worse than it is, Carrie's going to, you know, go against me. And Kalinda has some dirt on me. So at the end of the day, I feel like he can't trust anyone. He thinks everyone is out to get him. He has to. I mean, he is the biggest, most well-known drug dealer in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He knows the SA is after him. He knows the federal government is after him. He has lost his pride attorneys who've helped him time and time again. He, you know, he can no longer have Alicia and Carrie and, or even Diane represent him. So he, and, and he's trying to use his last pawn, I think, which is Kalinda, Kalinda. And, and he's losing his reign on her, or at least testing to see how tight he can hold the reins. Right. Because after Kalinda, he has no one else to go to to get the inside scoop unless he threatened someone with their life or something of that sort. Well, we saw in previews for next week that he's definitely making some plans. Yeah, he is, you know, trying to kill Castro. Yeah, I mean, Carrie. Cash, not Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. 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 So, I mean, we have plans, too. What we're planning to ask you, we're going to ask you right now, is if you're listening to this on iTunes, please go on to iTunes, subscribe to The Good Wife, and make sure that you rate us. We're working really hard for five stars. <laughs> if you're watching us on YouTube, we'd love to hear your comments. We're asking questions throughout the entire after show because we want to know what you think. I respond. Allison responds. We start a conversation. We want you to be a part of the conversation. So we just want to remind you that even though we may not be doing this after show tomorrow, we want to keep this conversation going right. until you see us here yet again live next week. Right. So the question is, does Kalinda care about Carrie? Does Kalinda care about Carrie? We have another question of, do we think Agent Delaney is playing Kalinda? What's up with Bishop? What's up? What's up with, with Bishop? Bishop and Kalinda? And we have a theory on the table right now. <laughs> a theory. That Bishop and Kalinda will become romantically involved. I'm My vote is please don't let that happen, but we'll see what happens. It's always interesting here on The Good Wife, right? And then my other question would be, we didn't even speak about this. I, I mentioned Castro. He he quit the race. And, and why? He did quit the race. So why? Well, that, let's talk about that. Too. Let's just head right on into it. Yeah. Castro, not only did Castro leave the race, but... They didn't even spend that much time on it in the episode. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like this thing cast to the side. Mm -hmm. But Castro was the original reason that Alicia supposedly got into the race. Castro is the reason why Carrie is in this court situation. In, 
in in all of this, right? Yeah. But now Castro has decided not to run. But as we saw from the episode, it doesn't seem as if Alicia is deciding, you know, okay, I'm won. This is victory. I'll let Prady have it. Mm-hmm. She's like, I want to get Prady now. Like, now it seems like she's really into the race. Because she sees the competition. She sees the challenge. At first she thought, oh, I can just have it. I'm, you know, the wife of such and such. It's going to be okay. And then as she's starting to go through this and train with them, you know, she's starting to get her feelings. Like, I I, I do appreciate how she's kind of strong as far as not letting little things get her down. That motivated her. When people said negative things about her, she was like, you know what? What can I do to do better? You know, she started thinking, like, if I go help, if I do this, um, maybe they'll think differently of me. So now she's like, it's a challenge and I feel like I can win. Well, let's. I I want to ask the question mm-hmm. because we're talking about the focus group. There's a focus group when the episode opened, mm-hmm. and the focus group. Some people were like, "I really don't know who she is." Right. Um, other people said, "I like her because she stood by her husband," or "I hate her because she stayed with her husband and her husband was screwing all these prostitutes." <laughs> right? Is is she a doormat? That type of yeah. thing, right? And then it came back to someone posing the question, saying, "I don't like her because she's entitled." Because she seems to be obsessed with her own pain. And I think selfish. Yeah, it was selfish, obsessed with her own pain and achievements. Right. And entitled. So, do you think Alicia is entitled? I think Alicia is misunderstood. Oh. By her actions. So, um, we translate things differently. When people do certain things, sometimes communication, you know, is key. But you can, you know, miscommunicate gestures or uh, what you say, the tone of something. I just think she's misunderstood. Um, I don't think she's selfish, but I, I don't think she was ever in a situation where she had to be giving, you know, or understand. Because her life is different. You know, she was raised. She was everything she's going through is different. So she don't understand what it's like to be homeless or to beg or to ask, ask for anything. So I think she's misunderstood because of um, her upbringing and the situation she's in now. I don't think she's selfish. I do think she's obsessed with her achievements. Um, but she started her own firm. I mean, she's done a lot, so why not? Yeah, I mean, that I started my own firm. When I heard the question of I think she's entitled, I thought about it. And I do think she acts entitled. And, and the reason why I think she behaves entitled is because, at least from what we've seen mm-hmm. from the show, right? It, it, when the show first came on, she was starting from the bottom. But mm-hmm. her bottom was pretty doggone good compared to what Did other bottoms are, right? Yeah. So in her world, in her, I think in her tiny universe mm-hmm. of, you know, gov- being a governor's wife or essay's wife mm-hmm. or, you know, being in the campaign trail and being in the public eye, she has been at the bottom, but it's still, you know, what, top 1% of the population, mm-hmm. right? So I think her her exposure, where she is in life, I think she does come mm-hmm. across a little entitled. And, and the part of the episode that really bothered me is when Finn, her love, you know, mm-hmm. I, I was disappointed <laughs> that Finn wasn't in the episode that much this yeah, time, he right? Yeah, was distant. He was distant. But when Finn invited her to St. Paul's Cathedral... To, to work in the soup kitchen on Wednesday. Now, this is a woman who's supposedly upset because she thinks of the focus group, the voter, in her mind at the time, everyone in Chicago thinks she's selfish and entitled. Mm-hmm. And he's giving her a way to give back, which is supposed to be very important to her. And her response is, well, I'll think about it. And she I- said she thinks about it. She will think about it because she was unsure. She she don't know. She should have went to Eli and told him, but she she had to think about it. Like, I, I don't know. Is, is, is this something I should do? Would this help me? She didn't know. I mean, you can tell she didn't know what she was doing. She showed up in her suit, first of all. What was that? She had her bag right there what on was the, that? by the dishes, dirty dishes. And then you're on the phone, and this is supposed to be a, call, a great cause where you're helping out. Phone should have been put away. That's showing selfishness because you're taking the phone call. You're still, you know, talking whatever you're talking about, doing your business. Take 30 minutes out to not answer your phone. Put your purse up. Put an apron on, you know. Come on. Act like you're actually helping out and serving the community instead of looking like a pretty little princess. Exactly. That's what she got called. Yeah. St. Alicia Florek working the soup kitchen. Yeah. But I, I, I don't blame anyone. I didn't blame them for that. No, I don't blame anyone because, okay, fine. You went to court. Right. But... Put a change of clothes yeah, in the car, I, you know. I just prepare feel like that ahead was a of time. Moment. I, <laughs> like I just, are you dumb? <laughs> right. But like, I, but it's hard for me to still. It's hard for me to believe that these things aren't coming to her e- more easy because she's done this campaigning thing several times. Yes, as a wife, but she's done it before. So 
a photo op is not anything new to her. I'm, 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 I'm having a hard time mm-hmm. accepting her difficulty in entering this world as the, the person who's campaigning as opposed to the person who's supporting the, you know, the, the candidate. Mm-hmm. She's seen this before. She knows the importance of a photo op. But it's a difference when you see it and when you're actually living it. She's the person that's actually going through all of this. And I just think she has so much going on. She has uh, the Carrie situation. She's trying to help out with Carrie. She just got the rape case. And right. So she's throwing all the places and then she's running around and she shows up here and then Eli blows her up, blows her up, blows her up. She's still like, oh, I got to answer. Eli may be important. But I think she's distracted right now. She's di- distracted by so many other things and she needs to just sit down and be like, if I'm, am I, am I going to focus on Carrie or am I going to focus on winning this? Right. But I, I don't... So... You don't blame them for for characterizing her in the I, photo op. As media, I definitely would have did that. Absolutely, I definitely would have done that. that. I, I'm not a go Alicia fan, but she messed up. I would have took the opportunity as a journalist, and I would have did that because you common sense. Like, but I can understand if she had to speak on behalf of that. Like, well, I just rushed from a court case. I mean, I could see if she gave me an excuse. I'm like, okay, I get, but you're you're still running, and you need to be tighter. She needs to be tighter. Yeah, I, she is a horrible. I think I said it last week. I might have said it two weeks ago. I might have been saying it ever since she entered this race. She is an absolutely horrible candidate for this essay's race. She's horrible, as in she's horrible, but she's knowledgeable. No, she and. and I, I think this episode, we saw her finally turn the corner Mm -hmm. to possibly really listen to Eli because she heard from the people in the focus group who said, you're entitled, you're selfish, Um, the photo op. She Mm -hmm. seems really phony, Mm -hmm. right? So she's trying to do all this stuff by herself. And Eli is like, why don't you just listen to me? But to piggyback on being phony, um, Eli told her, it's not about you caring. It's about you looking like an image to society. It's about you appearing as if you're becoming a better person. Right. So, so let him do his job. Maybe her acting skills suck. Well, clearly her acting <laughs> skills suck. I mean, we knew that. We, we've we seen her acting skills suck when she was with Pastor Jeremiah. Was that last week or a couple of weeks ago? Um, I think it was a couple weeks, weeks ago. In her interview with Frank Brady. Yeah, okay, yeah. Her, so like, her acting skills suck. She's, she's, yeah, she mm-hmm. sucks Like in this campaigning I thing. I think she's taking everything personal. That's very true. And it's getting emotional for her, and, you know, you just can't think take things personally, especially when you're running, you know? Well, that poses another question. So she's been a governor's wife, right? She's the governor's wife now. She's been a disgrace state's attorney's wife, right, when everything happened with her husband. And, and now when you hear someone call her entitled and selfish, again, she's taking these things so personally because she had that woman— running in her head the entire mm-hmm. time. She's selfish. She's phony. And and I actually thought, because of the way, maybe it was the way the show was edited and cut, I really felt like the only reason she did the St. Pa- I mean, Paul's Cathedral, you know, soup kitchen thing was because she had that woman's voice in I her mean, ear. Honestly, when everyone run for campaigns, half of the things they're doing is fake. They're just doing it to appear, you know, good to society. I don't think if she was running for this, she would go help the homeless. No, I, I, but I, I thought that I thought that when she heard initially heard the comment of you're entitled and you're selfish, I thought it really hit her as a person, mm-hmm. not as a candidate. I think I think Eli was you know explaining to her, don't take this personally. Right. Take this as a candidate. Let let's do something that a candidate would do in order to change the appearance of this. But I I, I found I find her I found the whole St. Paul Cathedral thing, especially because she didn't prepare and I'm mm-hmm. I'm running and but. I found I found it phony too. I mean, it looked terrible. I think she's she's rough around the edges, and she needs to be cleaned up. She <laughs> she needs some grooming. She needs to take some etiquette classes, and she's that's where Eli come in to groom her and help her. But lately, she's been trying to do things without Eli. Well, she didn't even want to participate in when Eli and Elfman said to her, "We know Prady's going to announce his candidacy, mm-hmm. and we have to do something in order to take the day away from him. Right? We can't let his." candidacy be announced and we not do something in order to to take some of the attention away because his brand is bigger than yours and Mm -hmm. you will lose. Peter's on board with it and she was like, that's not fake and phony. I don't want to do that. Let the professionals do their job. She's doing a lot of talking back. Yeah. You know what? I don't know with her. You know, she just, Eli should have ran for her. 
Well, <laughs> um, she has a chance because, like I'm saying, when it comes down to getting things done, she she's she's a boss when it comes to that taking care of business. But as far as presenting herself and looking a, a certain way to the media to society, she needs help. She she's just clueless when it comes to that. She definitely needs help. But now that it's just her and going to be pretty, pr- mm-hmm. pratty, 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 I can't pretty, remember. pretty, pratty, Frank. We'll Frank. go with Frank, okay. just to make sure. Frank I'm, it is. <laughs> Frank, just to make sure I'm pronouncing it correct. Frank. So now it's just going to be her and Frank, since Castro has withdrew himself from mm-hmm. the race. So now it's much more of a branding type of thing. Before they told her when it was just her and Castro, she had an eight point lead. Now it's going to be her and Frank. She, they've told her automatically, you're, 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 you're going to lose. Mm-hmm. Your brand is not bigger than his. I mean, just think about the focus group when. Everyone said about an Alicia, I don't know, or I don't know what she stands for. They flashed a picture of Frank. Oh, that's the CBS correspondent guy. I like him. He's smart. But this helps out in her case. She is a female. So when the room dealt with the female issue, all the females was on her side with the rape case. She's that's taking true. a rape case. Then they're like, we love her now. It's Everyone is getting raped, especially in college. That's, that's very common. And all the girls were like, oh, my God, Team Alicia. So... It, I think she has to um, gear to certain things for her audience. She needs to do something for the female. She needs to do something for the men, the young. The, you know, just certain activities that make them, you know, see her in a different light and like her and vote for her. Well, let me, I'm going to ask the question about, and, and I do want to talk about the date rape case mm-hmm. um, and how important I thought that was for to bring up in the episode. But before we start that, what you're saying, mm-hmm. the fact that now she's running for this race and she needs to appeal to, to everyone. And she has this focus group in the back of her mind. Um, do you think that had any weighing upon her taking this date rape case as far as she did? Because when Owen came to talk to her and asked her to come and be an advocate, she really didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. So do you think having that focus group and hearing what people were thinking of her changed her how, how much, how far, and how furiously she advocated on behalf of this, this young lady? That's a good question. I, at first, she wasn't interested. And then when she started hearing the negative feedback, she was like, oh, if I do this. But, you know, I think her feelings got involved. That's where a good lawyer came in. She just was like, you know what? This is wrong. Mm-hmm. When she got those pictures, she was like, you know what? I'm a female. I'm a mother. What are you guys hiding? Why are you painting this wall? I I think she just wanted to know the truth because it didn't seem right, especially when they wouldn't bring up his witnesses. She was like, you know what? I can't have this. Why you're you're wrong? We're gonna sue you. Why can't she bring up her witnesses? So I think at that time it was it, it was everything. It was the emotions, but she really sincerely um, noticed what they were doing was wrong, and she wanted to get to the bottom of it. Right. So it had something to do with you know at first she wasn't interested. Then it had something to do with you know the focus group, but then I think in reality it was just really her being a good person and she just she felt her intuition something wasn't right especially when the pictures came up on the wall she was like something's not right because she kind of felt sad when the girl walked away was like i'm done he's expelled she kind of was like you know what it's it's 60 other more cases we need to figure this out but i I think by that time because in this case jody that was the woman's Mm -hmm. the woman's name the the young student's name and i guess from the episode that she described herself maybe as a freshman maybe a freshman sophomore so jody was the college student who was very clear from the beginning about what she wanted she didn't want to go to the cops she didn't want to file any criminal charges she just wanted troy expelled so she didn't have to see him in any of her classes and i think alicia got caught up in everything and forgot that because you know Alicia stood up and said, you're not giving her due process. Alicia said, we're going to file a, a class action suit. And finally, Jody was like, look, no, no, no. I got what I wanted. I'm done. I don't want to take this any further. This is taking over my life. I think Alicia got completely caught up and forgot what the real purpose was. I, I can agree with that. But still, as an attorney and as a female, I, I, if something was wrong, something wasn't right, what about these other cases, you know? Why are we letting this go at a university? Why is it so common that people are being raped and it's, you know, it's unspoken? So, honestly, I feel like she did the right thing by trying to, you know, do what was right. That's what I think. Regardless of everything else going on, regardless of what the girl wanted, what's right is right, what's wrong, what's wrong. If it quack, quacks like a duck and quack like a quack, quack, whatever Bobby says, yeah. then it's guilty. Bobby and that's is, cool. Bobby is here guilty. in this room with us. He is in this room with us. But I want to say on a serious note, I do appreciate 
the good wife, its writers, its producers taking on this issue of date rape on campuses. It is a serious issue that, you know, has been plaguing college students mm -hmm. for years. I mean, I did a really quick search on the Internet and, you know, just coming up with that, and I found an article, a really recent article in Huffington Post that says that now the federal government is investigating 85 universities about, you know, cases with sexual mm -hmm. assault. So I, I appreciated the fact that they touched upon this really sensitive subject, um, it, it, regardless of whether Alicia's running for a campaign, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But I, I think it's a really important subject to bring forward. Because a lot of universities just sweep it up under the rug because they want it to interfere with their reputation, right. the admissions, like, right. all of that. All I of totally that. agree. And it, and it really brought forward not just that it's an issue, but it also taught people and students and women or whomever is, you know, is a victim to pay attention to their student handbook and that they really do have rights because mm -hmm. I feel as if you know these young people you go to college you don't know you're scared and unfortunately university in every situation might not be looking mm -hmm. out for you but this show this episode showed that you know students you do have rights you know it it taught you to, you know to read about your rights and to speak mm -hmm. up for your rights to make sure that you are being represented the best that you can be represented and it all, also showed a lack of knowledge the girl had no clue that any of that was in a handbook none it's plain size i never read the handbook i, I, I mean i was in school a uh, lot yeah. never read a handbook i never read it i was like okay signed right. it and whatever right but that shows other teens watching it or uh, college students watching it like, hey, you know what, if something happens like this or if I did go through this and, you know, kept silent about it, right. I have rules. I mean, you know, laws. I need to check out this handbook. You know, by seeing it, it would have made me read my handbook now. Right. And that's what we're hoping, that the people yeah. will read their handbook and know their rights. But what is a silent advocate? That just, that drove me yeah, crazy. I was so confused. What is that? Do you know? I don't, it, I don't know what that is. How Maybe can you be an Bobby advocate? And you, Bobby? Yes, Bobby. We're, of course, Bobby yeah, he would know. He knows everything. He knows it but all. That threw me off. I'm like, so she's your attorney. Right. She's your she advocate. She can't speak. She has to sit there and just breathe. And send you text messages, which yeah. I'm not sure if those text messages would have really worked in real life. It wasn't right, because if you know this, the um, uh, Cunning or Lewis, Lewis oh, mm -hmm. he was like, you know, I thought he was going to bring up text messages. Right. Like, were you speaking to her or having any other contact? And I thought he was going to be like, oh, well, we see that they were texting. But I don't I think it was illegal for her to text. I think it was illegal for her to text. And, yeah. and what about Lewis? coming back in this episode he threw me definitely being in a wheelchair, in a wheelchair. sick right exaggerating i mean i'm not being mean he is sick but come on now he just kept over exaggerating to get what he wanted in that court and i didn't want to laugh and please i'm not laughing at anyone's medical condition but what i did find humorous was yet again he shows that he will do anything he needs to do for his clients mm -hmm. whether it be interrupted proceeding by faking a, a kidney trend a scheduled kidney transplant Cause surgery it was fake because she asked so when is it he was like i don't know you have a kidney i don't have a kidney yet and then also taking just whatever convenient pauses that he needed to do in order to get oxygen from his exactly. oxygen tank that was so irritating. <laughs> <laughs> but, but again, it shows what he will do to advocate for his client. And we always love to see Michael J. Fox come mm -hmm. back to the episodes. Mm -hmm. So, But I, about him, mm -hmm. it, it's sad. Is he dying? Because I feel like he's being hard. And, you know, he's, he's not breaking down, but he's trying to tell her something, may, something bad may happen. And yeah. The message about his wife kind of made me feel like, like if a close friend that I, that I know was hard and wouldn't tell me everything, threw that in. Like if I do die, my wife like you, she's taking it hard. Please speak with her. I would have been like, oh, that's kind of like a sign right there. Well, I, I, I think for for as hard as these people advocate against each other in the courtroom. I do like to see the sides of them when they're just human people, right? And they're mm -hmm. not lawyers and they are coworkers or even ex coworkers. So that moment was to me, I thought I liked seeing that between the two of them mm -hmm. because all right, the case is over, whatever, the class action suit is over, Jody's like, I'm done. But now how re really how are you? And they've right. done a lot of fighting against yeah. each other in the last couple of episodes. We haven't seen that. I mean, we've seen Diane ask him a couple of times, How is your health? You know, Alicia was asking him. Alicia was asking him out through the entire episode, and he never really gave her an answer. But once the case is done and the dust is settled, now we're really people. And let me tell you, my my wife is not handling mm -hmm. this well. If you could just do me a favor 
and check on her if something does happen to me because she likes you. And it's those moments that you that still tells you that lawyers can be human. I know it's people stressful think stressful and emotional. Well, like you got we're fighting and then we're friends or we're having an affair or we're sexually active, <laughs> Finn. And I'm, I'm I was just at your house last night and you're you know trying to make my client go to jail for 15 years and then afterwards it's like. Ugh. You know, it was just the case. Yeah. How well, are you, honey? There are still people, which what? I think is the great, you know, that's the great part of this it's show. Hard, though. It's hard, though. It's so much weight. It's a it's you know, a ton of weight. Kudos to all the attorneys and, you know, lawyers out there because it's just very stressful and emotional. Well, I, you know, I would love to see or hear from some attorneys to see if, they, if you have friends out there who right. you fight against with in the courtroom yeah. and then as soon as the case goes or, you know, Whatever the is judgment that real? I would love is, that real? I would, I would love about yeah, that. Yeah, speak out about that. Let us know. I mean, um, I'm a transactional attorney, and you know, we go out for drinks as soon as the deal's done. That's just how it goes down. <laughs> well, I think we've covered everything. In the episode. Will we do uh, some predictions? Sure. And now you're after Buzz TV predictions. Well, <laughs> ma'am, you gave me one already with the bishop and the calendar relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Which I cannot handle. Are there any other predictions this evening? Um, my predictions. Um, of course, we know Kalinda will be off soon. Yes. We don't know how. I have an A or B. You know what? I just have an A. Okay. No. They're going to get intimate, and he's going to use that a way to steer her into killing her. Wow. Uh, my prediction also has to deal ha, deals with Kalinda, but I actually see, I definitely see a death in the future, but I see it being a death of Agent Delaney. And um, I see that possibly Kalinda being framed for it, and that may be her exit from the show. Oh my God, that was so good. I gotta give you credit for Thank that. Thank you. You're creative. Thank you. That was good writing. Thank you. you know? And you guys can take that and use it. I won't even ask for any kind of credit. <laughs> no, I will. <laughs> so if Bishop and them, you, uh, I'm calling the writer, like, hold up. I clearly said that <laughs> on After Buzz TV. Where's my money? Let but everybody no. <laughs> know of our predictions and let us know what your predictions are. But I think that wraps it up for us yeah. on this episode. We thank you so much for for tuning in again please go to itunes and listen and rate and subscribe and also talk to us on youtube and um let them know where they can find you and you can find me the lovely allison law at that's a law t-h-a-t-s a law um a-l-a-w on twitter instagram facebook and she is lovely and you Sometimes. can find me <laughs> you can find me tara johnson on twitter and instagram at tj wagging her tail that's wagging with uh Two G's, not three. Do you really wag your tail like? All the time. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll be back next week. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.